Bible, reading a chapter each day from the New Testament. In Acts 1 verse 8, we read the words of the risen Lord Jesus to his disciples the day of his ascension. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Lord, be with us today in the power of your spirit as we continue reading your word together. In your name we pray. Amen. Welcome to our reading from Acts chapter 26. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. So Paul motioned with his hand and began his defence. King Agrippa, I consider myself fortunate to stand before you today as I make my defence against all the accusations of the Jews, and especially so because you are well acquainted with all the Jewish customs and controversies. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. The Jewish people all know the way I have lived ever since I was a child, from the beginning of my life in my own country, and also in Jerusalem. They have known me for a long time, and can testify, if they are willing, that I conform to the strictest sect of our religion, living as a Pharisee. And now it is because of my hope in what God has promised our ancestors that I am on trial today. This is the promise our twelve tribes are hoping to see fulfilled as they earnestly serve God day and night. King Agrippa, it is because of this hope that these Jews are accusing me. Why should any of you consider it incredible that God raises the dead? I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and that is just what I did in Jerusalem. On the authority of the chief priests, I put many of the Lord's people in prison, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Many a time I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished, and I tried to force them to blaspheme. I was so obsessed with persecuting them that I even hunted them down in foreign cities. On one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. About noon, King Agrippa, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may for receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven. First to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles, I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. That is why some Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. God has helped me to this very day, so I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen, that the Messiah would suffer, and as the first to rise from the dead, would bring the message of light to his own people and to the Gentiles. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defence. You are out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. Your great learning is driving you insane. I am not insane, most excellent Festus, Paul replied. What I am saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with these things and I can speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul replied, Short time or long, I pray to God that not only you but all who are listening to me today may become what I am except for these chains. 
The king rose, and with him the governor and Bernice and those sitting with them. After they left the room, they began saying to one another, This man is not doing anything that deserves death or imprisonment. Agrippa said to Festus, This man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. We heard yesterday how Governor Festus had agreed that King Agrippa should hear Paul's case, as he was struggling to justify sending Paul to Rome for trial. Agrippa invites Paul to defend himself. Now the usual purpose of a, a legal defence is to enable the prisoner to justify his actions and go free. After all, Paul's been in prison for two years or more, but it's not his intention to go free. He knows he's going to Rome, as the Lord told him he would. So he uses this opportunity to spread the gospel. He sets out his Jewish heritage, first of all, as a Pharisee, his opposition to Jesus and his followers, and then his experience on the road to Damascus and his calling to spread the gospel, which is summed up in verses 17 to 18. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they might receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Agrippa recognises what Paul is trying to do, to persuade him to be a Christian, as he puts it to persuade all who are listening that they should believe and repent. Paul is more concerned for the salvation of these strangers than for the removal of his, his chains. What strikes me throughout our readings in Acts is Paul's absolute commitment to his calling to spread the gospel. This is no nine to five ministry. It is his complete way of life. And I confess I find that quite a challenge. The verdict at the end of the day with Agrippa is that Paul is not doing anything that deserves death or imprisonment. But he has appealed to Caesar, so to Caesar he will go. He will be sent to Rome. There are echoes of Jesus' trial here before Pontius Pilate. Pilate found that Jesus had done nothing wrong, but he was still handed over for crucifixion for our sake. Who do you know who needs to open their eyes and turn from darkness to light to receive forgiveness for sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in Christ? If you do know someone, are you prepared to take every opportunity to share the gospel with them? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the example of Paul to us doing everything he could to fulfil his calling to spread the good news. Help us, Lord, to follow his example, spreading your word, whatever the personal cost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.